In this video, we're going to study how to analyze non-uniform circular motion. Now, first of all, what is it? What, what do we mean by non-uniform? Well, this means that the speed is not constant. And so this typically occurs in an object that's undergoing vertical circular motion. And so you can sort of uh, imagine that on its way down, it would be picking up speed, getting faster. All right. But as it makes its way up, it's probably going to get a little bit slower and look a little bit labored as it makes its way up. And this is not surprising. This is just me going with gravity on the way down and against gravity on the way up. But either case, in either way, uh, this is an example of non-uniform circular motion. So how do we then study an object that is in non-uniform circular motion? So the key difference here consider the object over, over here, is that if I say I have a centripetal force, that is absolutely right because you are still moving in circular motion. But now, because your speed is changing, then the centripetal force cannot be the resultant force. There must be some tangential force along here that's causing your speed to change. And so in this case, if I'm getting slower, I'm obviously uh, moving in this way. And so that follows that my tangential force has to be something like this. It's called this Ft, which is causing you to slow down. And so let us consider a pendulum bob. All right, let's say it's here. It currently is down there. How do we analyze something like this? Well, the good news is that we do it in almost the exact same way as we analyze a uniform circular motion. And so first, you start off by drawing an FPD. So that's the weight. And you'll have a tension over here, okay? And then we, well, we are supposed to look for the resultant force, but that's going to be a little bit complicated. And so what we can do, we can still work with the centripetal force. Now, since the center of the circular motion is here, assuming that it's moving in a vertical circle like this, then the centripetal force acts this way, and we will resolve our forces into an axis that is parallel and perpendicular to the centripetal force. So if we if we do that, then of course you can see that Ft is fine. Okay, we uh, need to resolve the weight. Okay, so if we knew this angle as theta, then this over here would be mg sine theta, and this over here would be mg cosine theta. Now you'll notice something quite interesting about this. First of all, I can quite clearly say that mg cosine theta plus the tension must provide the centripetal force. But what does mg sine theta do? Ah, you can see mg sine theta is the one that now provides this tangential force. And this will always be the case when we study an object in non-uniform circular motion. You'll find that the, the components or the forces that are perpendicular to Fc do not necessarily cancel out. And that is normal because they need to provide this tangential acceleration. And so, just one more thing to point out when we are looking at non-uniform circular motion, right? I can just warn you that a lot of times Fc is always changing depending on which part of the circular motion you are at, right? And so, since Fc is mv squared over r, there are times where you may need to use the conservation of energy, right, to figure out what the value of V is.